Hello Year 8, welcome to your new topic. We're going to look at living systems in the next couple of weeks. What is this all about, this new topic? Well, it's about body systems and how they work. If you remember uh, from previous um, couple of years and even in primary school, your body systems are made up of different organs. Different organs are made up of different tissues like muscle tissue and connective tissue. And then those tissues are made up of individual cells. So this topic is on the systems level. So the first system that we're going to have a look at is the digestive system. And here it is on your screen. So let's quickly go through it and see if you remember those components. Pause the video now and check how many of these that you see on your screen you can already label. All right, have a go. How many did you get? Let's see. In your digestive system, here are the parts that you'll need to know today. One, here's your mouth, and with your mouth, you also have uh, teeth, necessary for digestion. Tongue, necessary for, for digestion. And also, the salivary glands and the saliva. You also have your esophagus, which is the tube going from your mouth to this other area here. That is your stomach. Then it goes to the duodenum, which is this tubing here. Then you have the small intestine. Then you have the large intestine. And as you can see, if I do this, you will see where the food is going. Small intestine, large intestine, and then rectum, and then the anus and out to the toilet. The two other components that this doesn't go through are these two here and this smaller one here that's attached. This one is the liver with the gallbladder and this is the pancreas. So let's have a look at those. They're the ones that you should by the end of today be able to know a little bit about and be able to identify the functions. So let's move on and see what we can find. Firstly, for your digestive system, we need to be able to break down food. What's the whole reason that God's given you a digestive system? It's to break down food into its small chemical parts so that they can be absorbed and then put into every cell of your body in order to make energy for your body or store it as fat. So as you can see here, the first point is we have to break down that food mechanically through moving it around with your tongue and chewing it and breaking it up with your teeth. And that's the whole reason why you have teeth. Then you also, if it was just that, then it would, uh, wouldn't break down very fast and quickly and easily. So you also need saliva. Saliva is there to move things around. If you've ever tried to eat without saliva or a very dry biscuit, you'll know that it doesn't break down or you can't swallow it very well. But the other thing in your saliva, really exciting, the interesting thing is it's chemical digestion, digestion as well because there's chemicals or enzymes in your saliva that break down certain parts of your food as well, especially um, our carbohydrates or proteins as well. So you've broken it down it then turns into not food anymore or a mushed up food. It's called bolus. So let's look at where it goes now. So now this mushed up food called bolus is going down your esophagus. And if we stop it here, it's actually being pushed. So you can actually swallow and it will go down into your stomach even if you're laying down or technically if you're upside down as well, it can do that if you are good enough at it but it's pushed down this bolus, this broken up food, by the movement, the muscle movement of your esophagus. And this muscle movement of your esophagus is called peristaltic movement or peristalsis, movement of that muscle in your esophagus to push it down to your stomach. And it continues all the way down. Next, we have the stomach. The opening of the stomach, uh, the stomach opens up at the top through a um, circular muscle called a sphincter, falls and drops into this digestive juice or stomach acid. As you know, acids can break things down, especially carbohydrates, proteins, so it breaks it up more. So we'll continue that on. Also, mechanically, sometimes your, um, a lot of the times your uh, stomach actually moves as well 
So it kind of moves in and out too. Uh, mechanically, or movement, to break that down a little bit as well. After that, it flows through and down. Let's go over here to your duodenum. Now we'll stop here. This area here is a small area called the top of your uh, small intestine called your duodenum. Now, it doesn't show up very well, but in that area of the duodenum, a number of things happen. One, uh, the um, liver makes stuff called bile. Bile gets stored in your gallbladder, which is this green stuff. When necessary, the gallbladder re is, releases some of this bile into this space here. And also a pancreas, which is this uh, air thing over the other side here, which is not shown at the moment, that also releases some uh, juices, some pancreatic juices into this area as well right here too. Both of those bile and pancreatic juices break down proteins and carbohydrates and also um, neutralizes the acid that's coming from your stomach because you don't want acid in here because as you know acids can really harm um, skin and other areas of your body so it, the stomach is made for acid it's really well lined but here it's not a great lining and it would actually cause problems if you had acid in here so to neutralize the acid to um, bring it back to the pH where it won't hurt any of your um, small intestine or other parts of your body, it neutralizes that acid with a base or alkali. Let's keep going. So now that bolus is going to come down here and go to your small intestine. At that point, this is where the main absorption, at, from, uh, at the moment, up until this point, no food has really gotten into your, into your body yet. It's really just flowing through one big tube. It's only until you start get it to get to the small intestine where you have this, and this is one of the most important functions of your entire digestive system. Your small intestine is lined with microscopic little finger-like projections like this. Little small fingers, which are really, 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 really small. And they line every part of your small intestine, which are a number of, your small intestines is a number of meters long. It's a very long tube. The reason that this is lined like that is each of these villi, and I'll keep on going, each of these villi have uh, blood, uh, blood in it and um, are able to uh, have uh, capillaries in it that will absorb the broken down food through very, very thin layers and be able to absorb it into your bloodstream. And therefore, it now technically is inside your body. Absorption of food through really of your small intestine, really key component of today. Then, after that fact, let's go back here. The leftover, and there is a little bit leftover, goes over here. Now, you've got this area down the bottom called an appendix. For us, the appendices, appendix doesn't really do a lot, but it does hold on to good bacteria, but also uh, it could get inflamed and get irritated if you have an infection in it. So sometimes, as you can see uh, there at the bottom here, that appendix sometimes can get really, really big and actually get as big as, and about the size of that there or even bigger. And if you don't get, and that could be full of bad bacteria um, an infection, and then if it explodes, then we have problems. So if this grows really large, you have an appendicitis. And so you have to go to uh, and get a surgeon to remove your appendix. So some of you might have heard of people, you may have had an appendicitis before that you've had to uh, re get removed. So after uh, that, after most of the uh, good nutrient is removed in small intestine, then it goes into the large intestine. Now, why do we have such a large intestine? Well, the reason that it is long, not as long as a small intestine, it's just small because it's thin. This is large because it's wide, okay? The large intestine is to absorb uh, a lot of water, all right? So in small intestine, we absorb into our body, into our bloodstream, lots and lots of nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, etc. Here, uh, fats are, and a lot of fats are absorbed up uh, in the duodenum too. 
small intestine absorbs lots and lots and lots and lots of water. If you have a problem in your small intestine and that gets inflamed and you can't, it's not useful sometimes, then you might have diarrhea because the water that usually gets absorbed in your large intestine can't get absorbed and then goes into down here, which is your rectum, where anything that is not taken into your body gets stored. And then when it's an appropriate time and you need to go to the toilet, which is not, you know, all the time, it gets stored in there until it fills up, your uh, your rectum fills up. Um, and then you can excrete it through the anus and into the toilet. All right, that's a very quick one rundown of your digestive system and the marvelous way that it actually works. I'm gonna get you to go on to Education Perfect and there's a few activities that I'd like you to do on that. All right, good luck.